the car these days. I can't remember everything. All right. Um, recording has started. This is the uh, January 21st meeting of the Economic Development Commission's Retention and Incentive Committee. With that, Mr. Chairman, do you uh, want to call the meeting to order? Okay, call the meeting to order for the Retention and Incentive Committee. Everybody's here. Um, we're first going to do the minutes, right? Right. Uh, does anybody have any questions with regard to the previous minutes? Yeah. Hearing none. Somebody want to vote to accept? I accept. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anthony, can you hear us okay? I can. Okay, very good. All right. All right. Uh, minutes have been passed. Um, Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, you had asked me to uh, just have a, a brief report on um, the, some of the federal and state uh, relief programs. And um, so I'd like to do that. And again, briefly, because the information is, is uh, online, yeah. um, you know, at, at length. But I think since we last met, the um, one of the things that has come from the state is what they call a Connecticut Business Recovery Grant. And unlike other things, it's not a loan, it's a grant. Um, what makes this very unique is that there's no application process for this. Mm -hmm. This is a matter of, of qualifying through the Department of Revenue. Yep. So um, I'll go through some of the criteria, but it is a $35 million grant, and it is focused on 2,000 of Connecticut's hardest hit businesses, including restaurants and hospitality businesses. Mm -hmm. I'll get into a little bit more uh, in a minute, but grant sizes range from $10,000 to $30,000. The real kicker here is that there's no application process. So every every business has to file quarterly sales and use tax reports to the state of Connecticut Department of Revenue Services. Mm -hmm. So what, what the uh, Department of Revenue Services is doing is they are comparing um, the quarterly reports, sales and use tax reports, uh, from the you know time of the pandemic to the time before the pandemic. And thus, they will be able to take and make a calculation or determination as to whether the business has been negatively impacted and by how much. All right. So and then there's a point system that uh, then allows um, those companies to qualify for money. And again, they don't have to do anything. If, if, if the DRS, Department of Revenue Services, determines that they qualify, they get a check in their mailbox. That's right. All right. So uh, let me just go through some of the qualifications. So. Um, as we know that the NAICS code, which is the IRS uh, business code designation, um, so they go by NAICS code. So, you know, restaurants are included, um, certain, you know, hotel lodging, depending on their size, you know, theater, entertainment, recreation, um, uh, other services, breweries, wineries, movie theaters, um, travel organizations, uh, uh, transit ground transportation companies. So. You get the you get the feel that this is broad based. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is the, this is the state's way of saying that we have, you know, by virtue of executive order, in, in, impeded many of these businesses from operation. So we're going to try to help them get through the winter months by by doing this. Okay. So um, again, there's a fair amount of detail, but um, one of the criteria is that you have to have. Uh, you have to have suffered 25% or more reduction in gross receipts. Like the PPP program, same way. A um, little, little different, but similar in nature, where the PPP is a loan, where this, this is a grant. So no expectation of repayment of this money. This is, uh, okay. this, this is a, this is a grant. Um, does not apply to non-for-profits. Uh, does not apply to places like golf courses, country clubs, etc. Um, so the way it works is that businesses are given one point for uh, when they compare gross receipts from 2019 to 2020. Uh, one point is worth $15,000. So this is real money for a lot of these, these smaller businesses. Um, and they're given an additional point if a decrease in gross receipts in 2020 versus 2019 is between 40 and 55 percent. So the harder hit you are, the more points you get. Each point represents dollars. So one point's fifteen thousand bucks, two points is twenty thousand, three points is twenty five thousand. They go up by. Um, so, and we do know of some companies in town that have already received the money. They started sending these checks out um, um, January the eighth. Um, that was a, that was the question I was going to have. I mean, there's there's a lot of good programs, a lot of things yeah. going on. How do we get that? Make sure you speak loud enough. How do we get that vehicle 
that information out. And I think, you know, we post it on the, the EDC website right. from where to go to it. And then hopefully people will, and then if you know people, obviously. It's I mean, it's, it's, and the Department of Revenue Services, because they're the recipient of the, uh, of the sales and use tax yeah. the reports, they've sent stuff out to the businesses. So uh, it's, it's pretty, it's wide, widely known. But the thing is, because there's no application process, mm -hmm. there are some businesses that are receiving checks saying, what's this for? Really? Where's this coming wow. from? Right? Because some wow. people, not everybody stays in the loop, right? So it's really, it wasn't necessary to, to do a broad-based broad -based educational effort mm -hmm. because um, there's no application process. You, if you get it, they receive it. Some are surprised. Some are anticipating it. Um, depending on the level of sophistication. Um, did, did I understand? I'm sorry, Rose. Did, did I understand correctly then that the, the the business really doesn't have to go through any process at all? None. You don't but have to apply doing, for it. None. But you're you're just they're doing it based on the Department of Revenue Services. Look at here's your receipts last year. Here's your receipts this year. Right. Obviously, you're suffering. You fall into this category. Therefore, we send you a check. Correct. That's incredible. Yep. Um, is this something um, that we would ever have um, our newspaper lady put something to um, like the uh, something wonderful in the state that we want to from the Economic Development Commission share with you as uh, um, ever, like as a perk for Walling, you know, for our um, economic development. I mean, is that something um, you would do or it, don't? Do? It's a statewide program, so it's not just applies to, to Wallingford. Uh, but um, I don't, I don't you know. It, it's a good point. I don't know that I've seen it in the, you know, the general press. Uh, it's come out in, you know, when the governor does his reports, his right. government reports. He's mentioned it in those, and it's come out in press releases from the Department of Economic and Community Development. It would be, uh, Tim, I was going to suggest maybe it's a, uh, a good, if there is a press release, it's something that we can certainly share on the website as a blog or at least a link to it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Some, of, some, of the, some of the businesses will hear something from their accountant. Right. You know, so my right. accountant has been forwarding me things like this. But this is, quite frankly, this one, I'm, that's news to me. Yeah. Uh, now, so, thank God we don't need it. But the, you know, the idea that, that's proactive that the government's actually looking at and giving you a handout it's the uh it's the well, my my point was a press release in, in wallingford or in our newspaper you know there are always people that are out there really trying to find fault with what the edc does yep. and i was thinking of it in terms as even yep. though it isn't our program and it's a state program sure. but just making people aware that we're aware of yeah, it. Yeah. I don't know. Just... We can put the link to it, like you said, on the website. Yeah. And then maybe something Joe could cover in his, his thing on oh, the Wallingford Magazine. That's a good This call. Yeah. yeah. We don't uh, add that to it. But I knew of a grant program, too, but I didn't think it was that wide open. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is wide else. open. Now, they, they, it's $35 million. Okay. I will say that previously the state has done several programs um, that did have applications processes sure. and um, you know they were upwards of 50 million dollars and they closed them and ran out of money yeah. you know pretty I'm sure this is so um, yeah. what, what they were what they're saying is that the Department of Revenue Services because they have all the data and if you so take a, a, a quarterly report uh, to sales and use tax report from pre-COVID and now they have almost four quarters. They've got three quarters of them, right, that are in, in COVID. So they, they took, I think it was uh, uh, Q2 of uh, 2020 mm -hmm. and compared it to 2019 because they can compare them all given these businesses. Sure. And they determined the 35 million was going to be sufficient based on the data, that their own research. So, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we'll, We'll see. I have not heard that they've run That's out of good, money. Nice, so. to, nice to hear something. I think it's wrong. wonderful that there's no um, the application process. I mean, a lot of small businesses don't have time to fill out that application. It's, it's sometimes yeah. it's sophistication. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah. About that. Well, I can tell you that the, the, we did the PPP program, and, and it's long and it's daunting. Once you've done it, and if you, you know, the new rule is, which I think is absolutely appropriate, is if you already got a loan, you're not eligible unless your business is down 25%. Um, so people who haven't applied can do it. But once you're set up into it, 
it goes pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. it, it, it runs through pretty mm -hmm. smoothly. A little bureaucratic, but you know, it's and a lot of time consumed waiting for answers. But it, it, we, our loan was forgiven. Yeah. You know, so we didn't have to pay the loan back. Yeah, my son either, and I think he got like five hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Wow. Um, I his, aim too low. <laughs> well, his payroll was like yeah, I read. ninety thousand dollars. So, Anthony, um, because you've been so directly involved with the marketing committee on on our social media um endeavors you know this is one of those perfect examples where when it comes out and again this has been out for three weeks already so i don't know that it's real it's news at this point to many people but um it, it, this would be a perfect example of when something comes out where we can now be uh, much uh, more responsive and get something yep. out to our followers a lot faster yep real time exactly mm -hmm. exactly uh so um all right, uh, so that is that is that. That's called the Connecticut Business Recovery Grant Program, um, and I think it's uh, I think that's a that's a good one. It's going to help a lot of people. Excellent, Gary. You you made reference to uh, the PPP program, yep. so um, I think everybody understands now that there is a second round of PPP that is out there. Yep. Um, in the, when they first launched it, it was open only to people who had not um, subscribed or requested a PPP loan in the cool. beginning. Um, now it's been out for several weeks and so now anybody who's uh, re uh, received a ppp loan in the first round can apply again in the second round uh, i think the difference um, is that um, the uh, some of the criteria have changed um, where um, uh, for example ppp loans the ppp stands for uh, the payroll protection program so the 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 concept of that was the government came out uh, during the summertime for the first round and said, we want you to keep people employed. Right. Keep them employed, we'll give you the money to pay your people. Um, and then, of course, that was a loan. It's a 1% loan that had, de depending on amounts, and we don't need to get into all the detail, but, um, and then what's happened as time has gone on is the government has, in most cases, uh, turned around and said, we're gonna forgive the loan. Right. So there's a process to apply, right. we're gonna forgive the loan. So. Now the second round, and, and in the first round, you could use it to cover things like rent and, and uh, things like that. But mm -hmm. the second round, um, uh, you can use it for more more things. So the criteria says additional expenses, including operations expenditures, uh, property damage costs, um, supplier costs, and worker protection expenditures. So um, the bottom line is they're saying we can we'll, you can use it for a broader amount, yep. broader base. Um, it is it is a loan. They're not, they're not promising or signaling right. that it'll be forgiven. Right. Um, the SBA, Small Business Association, is, is the uh, repository to be handling all of these loans. Um, the SBA, um, you know, pre-COVID uh, was, you know, it's, it's not a huge organization. When, it, when you, you think about a funnel, you've got everything going in from the top of that funnel into the SBA, and, and they were deluged, uh, which led to some, you know, Pretty extensive delays and, and you know, some pretty disappointed sure. people. Um, but the way you get to the SBA is through your, your personal banker. Okay. So businesses, mm -hmm. you go to your you go to your bank. Uh, your banks have got people. In most cases, the banks have got online uh, application forms that, frankly, are pretty straightforward. Uh, then someone from the bank, once they see the application form, they'll reach out to you. The bank goes through a, a they vet the application, make sure everything is there that you need. And then the bank submits it once they know it's it's complete. They submit it to the SBA and for approval. The SBA is working desperately to, to reduce the approval times because their approval windows in the beginning were, were quite extensive because of volume. Mm -hmm. um, but the government they've also improved increased staff at the SBA if you're on the country, et cetera. So um, I think the only the only thing that I um, and I, these things are fluid, so things change. Uh, depending on what the reaction is by the businesses. So right now, unless they change him, I think for those of us who are hearing that, hey, if you've already got a first loan, you can get a second loan, but only if your business is down right. from previous levels. Right. You know, But I, I think that even will be adjusted as things right. go forward, because they don't just want to raise people up that are just, but they want people who are existing to continue to grow or maybe even hire people. Um, that's right. what we did. We hired somebody. Right. So you know that's that's the stimulus, and I think as the new administration comes in, 
you're going to see adjustments on this day. So the um, to that point, Gary, the, the first round of PPP loans, um, it, it was it was kind of an open book. I mean, yeah. there, there were there were companies, huge companies, that went in and you know swept out tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. yeah. Several of them that were embarrassed publicly, and then so they you know came out and said, okay, I'll give the money back. University, oh. especially. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, the second round. You mentioned earlier your business needs to prove that it's it's down you know, 25 percent or more, mm -hmm. but it's also limited to businesses that are under 300 or fewer employees. So you, you don't have corporate America these huge companies going in and siphoning the money out. It's it's so they've they've refined it to aim it at smaller which is uh, smaller businesses, which I guess obviously is an improvement. So absolutely. All right, so that's you know that's that. The yeah. second round of PPP is out there. Um, uh, people should be applying you know uh, through their bank. And then the bank to the SBA, and uh, we go from there. I think when you talk to businesses, like Rose said, um, it, it, and friends, and you know, family, so forth and so on, the network. The only thing you can do is just make people aware. You know, just say, look at, have you looked at it? There's people that are saying, I don't want to go through all that paperwork. Yeah. I don't want to do this. I don't. Want to. But then at the same breath, they're crying about how their business is going under. Right. So right. you know, it behooves all of us to just. Just make people aware and say, look at if you can't do the application and you don't have an account, let me recommend, you know, you can make a recommendation. Here's an account I know that does it or, or whatever. Uh, I think that's what we have to do because um, I, I, I hear it all the time. I hear it from, you know, especially restaurant owners. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, we're going under da, 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 and you talk to them about it. They're so busy just trying to keep things going. They don't right. have the time to do it. Yep. Yep. Um. So the other thing that, that maybe we can transition into uh, Barstool. Everybody's heard of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. yeah. So uh, yeah, we have two re two restaurants in town. Yeah. Tavern, Tavern. Tavern on Main, Tavern, Tavern on Main, Oscar, both got Barstool funding. Um, of course, that's private funding. It has nothing to do with the government. This is a a, um, a fellow named Dave Portnoy, who is a, yeah. an IT guru up in Boston, who started this thing. And, and you've had the likes of he put in five hundred thousand dollars. You've had the likes of Aaron Rodgers from the Green Bay Packers, yeah. put another five hundred thousand dollars. So people have been jumping on this. Certain celebrities, etc. The Kraft family, the owner of the Patriots, put money in. So yeah. they're they're they're. This is a, a private fund that they've been disseminating to businesses. And the application process is a video. Yeah. And you 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 take and you do a video, you send it in, talk about you know why you feel, or you know, explain why you need the money, yeah. and then they make a determination as to whether they get it. So, uh, people we help when people. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, it's wonderful. The, it really is. One one of the beauties of this is uh, is that um, at the time now it's it has changed since over the last several weeks, but when Tavern on Main received received notification, they were going to get money. There were four restaurants in the state of Connecticut that received Barstool funding. Now, again, it's more now, but at that time, there were four yeah. in the state of Connecticut, and two of them were in Wallingford, and two of them were in Hartford. So, wow. that's, I think that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Anyway, so I just I share that. So, you know, as we talk about trying to retain these businesses and keep them alive, um, there's governmental efforts, and then there's mm -hmm. private endeavors as well that are out there, you know, working on behalf of the people to keep them going. So, uh, all good things. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, for ready? Let's see. Check on status of the two town center property owners. Yes. Yeah, so at the last meeting, um, we had talked about um, the fact that we had um, recommended and subsequently had approved or reapproved our um, incentive housing zone uh, mm -hmm. tax incentive, and we talked about the fact that that tax incentive is pretty much it's it's geographically uh, defined and it's the bottom of, of Center Street. Um, Knowing that we have two projects up in the upper part of the hill that have been that have received certain levels of approval from the Planning and Zoning Commission, but neither project gets started, you would ask me to give them a call and see what the status of the, right. the projects were. Um, so I did speak to Mr. Hall, who owns 50 South Main Street, uh, which is if you're looking at the front door of the post office on South Main, he's the immediate building to the right, <laughs> in, in, between, in between that and Webster Bank. And uh, he, in fact, is, is in the process of getting started. So okay. we'll see some activity there pretty soon. He, Wasn't there a stipulation that he had to have a restaurant before he could get started? Um, well, it's, it's a, the, the zoning in that area is mixed use. So what he wanted to do is take the existing building 
uh, and, and which was an office building, is an office right. building, hasn't done anything with it yet. He wanted to convert that completely to residential, but zoning didn't allow him to do that. So right. his lot, you can enter his, his site from South Main Street. You can also enter it from behind the post office off of Center Street. Years ago, at the mouth of that driveway was Highlands Bakery. So we, we dug all that stuff up uh, and, and said, what if you were to put a building there? And that would that would take an, and um, um, that would act as your mixed use. So right. planning and zoning, I think, did a, a great service. I think they showed fantastic flexibility in saying, all right, we'll let you do residential in the office building if, in fact, you build a retail structure on, on your property. Mm. And then we'll put the two together and consider that the mixed use, fulfilling the mixed use. Um, he's advertised that, that retail building on center street. It's, it's, it's he's gotten absolutely no takers. Um, and that was even pre COVID. So yeah. now it's probably even more unlikely. Um, uh, so what the planning and zoning commission, uh, did allow him to do is said, you can, you can build out your, um, your residential in that building, recognizing that, you know, it's be nice to get some cash flow going. Okay. You can build that residential, but we're only going to give you COs. Certificates of occupancy for, I don't remember the exact number. It may have been may have been half. Mm -hmm. So bottom line is, you build out all your apartments. We'll let you you will let you occupy half of them, but we're not going to let you occupy the other half until you build that retail building. So that's yeah. that's kind of the that's kind of the card that they're holding to make sure that the retail side of it gets done, which I think is very fair. And Mr. Hall thought, said it was very fair as well. So, but he is in the process. Uh, he told me recently that he has secured the funding to get the project started. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should see some activity over there over That's the next here. couple of months. Yeah. I don't know where to park my car when I go to the post office. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where everybody ends up going in there. Yeah. Um, the other property um, was the property that uh, was is owned by Mr. Dean Natale, mm -hmm. and uh, I did spoke speak with uh, Mr. Dean Natale, and um, uh, he is in the process also of of um, taking those two, you know. I don't want to be disrespectful, but those two, you know, pretty beat up buildings that right. are right on the corner of Wallace Avenue, right yeah. behind the package store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he has got permits to take those two buildings down mm -hmm. uh, and he, he's going to do that. And he also has permits to take in, in, um, uh, on the Center Street building, which used to be the old police station, the old right. town hall on that second floor. He's going to make that residential. Um, uh, so he's in the process of, of uh, doing that. He says we should see some activity in there by spring. So. Both of the projects uh, are uh, the one, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and when he when they when he went to zoning, it was like I never could quite understand when he came to speak to us that he said they had said wait a year before you do it. Why would they have done that? Do you remember that? I don't remember that. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, the only thing I do, I know back when we talked about it to that timeline, we were talking about the opportunity that there were a couple of property owners with regard to fixing up the parking lot yeah and and, and that was kind of a you know still undecided who was going right. to do what but i think mr Natale decided i'm going to move forward with this part of my project that i can do right and yeah. you know since then look at ross closed no, not ross uh, uh the other one uh, jake, jake christians yeah and that was one of the people that were involved at that yeah. time so yeah. things changed yeah, there are five property owners that uh, if you um, go to the end of the Kaplan property on uh, North Main Street, the yep. driveway that you go in between the church. So if you use that as a boundary line, use Wallace, uh, use Center and North Main, there's five property owners in that in that square. We're going to what we talked about before about pulling people together. To yeah. Build yeah. Yeah. Really there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's good synergies. I mean, we, yeah. we've met with the five property owners. This was back uh, well over a year ago uh, when Casey Hain was still our town planner. We had all the property owners in the in the town all together saying, "How can we help you right. do something to develop and improve, you know, your your particular your sites?" So, uh, um, anyway, so that's the update on the uh, the the two uh, uh, those two properties that you had asked me to to uh, look into. I, I, I will add that um, although this is not on the agenda, just a conversation that um, in terms of retention. Um, Albeit the unemployment rate in the state of Connecticut is, is um, depending on the statistics you look at, it's between six and a half and eight percent. Uh, we are back into a situation where we've got employers that can't find help. No. So um, it's it's a it's a dilemma. 
Um, it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to retaining businesses. Workforce mm -hmm. is the number one consideration. So um, um, to to that end, we have, we've had uh, the legislative delegation in town hall that the mayor had pulled in. All of our state reps and senators came to town hall uh, in early January um, just to talk about what we as a community want to see them focus on in Hartford. And um, that's something that, that I had brought up as part of my, my request is that, you know, please help solve the disconnect between a high unemployment rate and the fact that employers can't find people. I mean, there's just something needs to be done. Um, uh, so they are, they are aware of the problem and we'll see, you know, whether, what the solutions they may come up with. The thing you want to avoid is the cynicism, you know, that, because you, you hear it um, in our industry. Uh, there was just a survey done, and it, they talked about what are the big issues going forward. Obviously, COVID is the number one priority, number one issue. And then it gets into what are, where do you go from, what are you going to invest in, and so forth. And the same thing came up, can't find good salespeople. You know, and then some people say, well, everybody's getting a free handout. Everybody's, you know, mm -hmm. that's not it. It's, it's just mm -hmm. the workforce is changing, you know. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going to. I was going to ask, you know, what what sort of uh, positions are people having a hard time filling? Uh, historically, uh, at least in the last decade or so, it it seems to be skilled labor. Uh, are people complaining or, or or saying that they're not able to fill, you know, technical roles, high skilled roles? What sort of what I'm hearing mostly, Anthony, is is uh, just general labor. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the factory floor labor that they're struggling to get it's um i mean not that amazon should be a bell cow by any stretch but i mean they've, they've got a thousand job openings and they, they, yeah. they, can't, they well, can't find people oh my God. yeah and i think part of the problem is is with some of the stimulus money you have people who can go to work and uh, or who can stay home and make more money on unemployment with stimulus than they can in a in a 12 13 14 15 dollar an hour job yeah yeah, yep. and, and there's no drive, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. And and again, with keeping politics out of this thing, but you know, I think you gotta you gotta kind of turn the page, and you gotta go. Okay, let's let's see where we go. Because I think you know, people coming into whether it be Republican, Democrat, whoever, people have to start turning the page and saying, okay, we gotta get through this. And you know, you can't sit at home and expect to be fed, you know, constantly. However. You know, recognize that the demographics have changed. Uh, people are not going to work the way they used to work before. That's that's probably changed forever. Um, I mean, I'm I'm surprised that with the, the difficulty we're having in just finding salespeople. Um, again, put that in the right context. Salespeople. What are salespeople these days? You're not in your car. Mm -hmm. You're not going making face-to-face -face calls. Yeah. So you have to be pretty effective in your presentations and your the way you go out and sell. So I, I think to Anthony's point, to your point, Tim, that, you know, what are the jobs that need to be filled? You know, you, you hear some people, I mean, I was reading an article yesterday about transportation, uh, logistics, which Anthony, I'm sure you, you've you seen the rate increases and everything. Uh, oh, yeah. Unbelievable. The, the, the cost of transportation. You can't get trucks. And now the people who make the trucks, uh, you know, the mass. Is it because they can't get drivers? It's a combination of things. They're new vehicles. They, they can't even get their hands on new vehicles. Now, some of that could be, hey, and I guess we're all picking on Amazon, but yeah. you know, Amazon, sure. these big logistics companies are saying, I got the first 200 bobble brand new you know, yeah. yep. trailers or tractors before Tim, who needs them for his business, can get them. So you know, these shortages are starting to come up in the supply mm -hmm. chain. And uh, yeah. we were talking about in our industry, plastics. Um, Chinese, again, pick out the Chinese. But the Chinese are grabbing up all the resins, uh, plastic resins over in Europe. Uh, so we're starting to see a little, you know, moving there. So I think everything's adjusting to a new supply requirement. And and I think whether it be labor or raw materials or transportation, it's going to be you know six months of trying to adjust. I, I did as a result of um, you know some of the inquiries I've had about you know inability to fill jobs. I talked to our contacts at the Workforce Alliance, mm -hmm. and um, they too said that they have uh, they have requisitions, meaning jobs to fill, that, that are in excess of 1,200, and the applicants are next to none. Really? So oh um, one of the things that, um, and, and you know, the, the state of Connecticut has invested 
heavily, and, and I, I give them credit for doing so in, in workforce training. It's in either incumbent training programs or taking and retraining people who have found themselves unemployed. Yeah. Um, so what, one of the things that I had suggested to our uh, legislative delegation is, is to at least consider um, making um, the receipt of unemployment um, contingent upon someone signing up for workforce training. Mm -hmm. So um, remember, I mean, way back when you'd receive unemployment, you had to go out and fill out a certain number of applications type thing. I don't think that's the case right now. No. Pretty oh, sure it's gosh, not. No. So, yeah, it's been for a while. Yeah. So if someone is unemployed and say, let's say there's a training program for, you know, a CDL, you know, a truck driver's license, or there's a training program for, I just saw Gateway Community College put a, a degree program in for logistics mm -hmm. uh, and, and product handling. Uh, you know, it's forklift operating, it's warehouse management, mm -hmm. things like that. So, um, so let's say someone's on unemployment and then they, they have to sign up for one of these. And there's a, there's a bevy of different type of workforce training programs. You know, some of them are in food service, et cetera. And you sign up for it, you take the class, and you say, you know something? It's not for me. It's not something I want to do. Well, that's okay. Then sign up for another one. <laughs> right. right. Well, right. So. There, but there's some accountability, at least. Exactly. exactly. You know, I, I know people personally that I go to the islands for a vacation and just dial in and get their check deposited yeah. and a significant check, like yeah. a $500 check yeah. put in their account. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's the, yeah. what's it's going to be interesting to see how this is balanced. I mean, again, you know, coming out of what we just gone through, whether it be the COVID, the politics, everything else, how our current president balances fairness and so forth. But I was pretty impressed with the comedy made yesterday, uh, which I was a little surprised at Joe Biden when he said, you know, I find anybody in my staff disrespecting anybody, you're going to be fired on the spot. No questions asked. Yeah. I thought, that's wow, that's words. not a Joe Biden <laughs> Yeah. So, anyways, um, so I just wanted to add that to the agenda, or not to the agenda, but just add that to the conversation. Although sure. it was not on the agenda, I just wanted you to be aware that that is something that's uh, resident. Maybe we can put it on the agenda for next month or next time we meet. Is there? Is there? Um, the I just I was just thinking about what what incentives. I mean, obviously our, our tax incentives are in place. Thank God, and good work by Tim in front of the council and so forth. Um, you almost feel a little helpless sitting back during all this and going, okay, we got some great things going on in the marketing programs uh, with Kunipiak and, and Matt, and how can we how can we spin off that on the uh, retentions and incentives? To I think for us, the incentives are there. How do we get the retentions part of it um, pinned down? Because you got to ask yourself if if Barstool, for example, had not given. Those two businesses, right. they probably be out of business, right? The this is, this is a strong chance. That over and done with. You know, how do we get some vehicle out there that we could say to people who are in trouble that we don't know about? Mm -hmm. um, get on our website. And, uh, if you're if you're struggling, I know we probably get overwhelmed, but at least we'd have a heads up. Versus, you know, I can't call every business and say, "Hey, how you doing?" But we all know businesses that are that are straining. Yeah. I don't know how you dig into that pool and, and say you can handle it. So all of the relief programs that I'm familiar with, and I say all, you know, I'll, I'll qualify that in a second, but they're either state or federal federal programs. Right. In my conversations, and we meet um, at least at least monthly with the regional economic developers. The only town that I'm aware of, uh, or two towns that have programs within the municipalities themselves, yep. Middletown and Meriden. Um, and both of the programs are very well undersubscribed. So they've made programs available to local, you know, using municipal tax dollars, um, mm -hmm. uh, but they're they're not getting. I mean, they've got money left over. So yeah. it's it's because of criteria um, that they they've set. Perhaps um, I guess my point is that it's a very very difficult problem to solve locally. Yeah. I, as I reported last time we met, that when uh, I met with uh, uh, WCI. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Jingris, the vice chair of EDC, and I met with WCI to talk about what we could do for you know, town center businesses. And it becomes very, very difficult to say, okay, how do I make it fair? If I give something to you, how do I how do I not give something to you? And how much money is there to go around? And, it, and then the, the, the question is, how long do you save them? So, I mean, I think yeah, some, some of the best 
best uh, ideas I've heard are, are educational opportunities, teaching. Uh, and Kathy Lilly, Lilly, the executive director of WCI, has put together some programs where they're teaching merchants more about online merchandising. Mm -hmm. uh, and more, you know, look, look at all the restaurants that have transitioned into takeout right. uh, and, and things of that nature. So, you know, my, my personal feeling is the best way to help these businesses is at some point, let's hope sooner than later, allow them to conduct the business that made them successful in the first place. Because you can't, you can't subsidize no. them forever. No, just, there are businesses that do, I don't, there's a bad rough terminology, that deserve to go out of business, yeah, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and, and that's going to be there. I'm just, um, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if some of these businesses have been caught up in this. We have no idea what the future is. We have no idea how, you know, the right. vaccines are going to do. We have no, so therefore they bad. table everything. Yep. And then you're going, how do you, how do you help those people? Right. You know, you can't. They're, they're saying, I'm not, well, I'm not willing to make a decision on my business right now. Yep. Wow. That's one of the criteria for the, those, uh, assistance programs is that you have to show that your business was a going concern before COVID hit. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. But, you know, it, it's like anything else. We've, we've seen it through different, you know, economic cycles in, in, in our lifetime where, you know, people who have planned a little bit for a, a downturn yep. typically can sustain it a lot longer because they anticipated it. And people who have, you know, always kind of live um, hand to mouth. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and sometimes that's a lifestyle, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They get the money, they go out and spend it, they don't they, they don't put a nest egg together. You know, they're obviously much more fragile, and they're the ones that are reaching out more than anybody, I guess. But uh, well, anyway, when I, I talked about to... a press release, it was like, if you watched um, Debbie uh, Pasilio, she, it was several of her um, no, customers that encouraged her to do this. She knew nothing about right. it. Right. So word of mouth is, you know, so, Innovation is really it's 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 been it's been kind of re not kind of really refreshing. I mean, you see some people that just said enough of this. I'm I'm going to take the bull by the horns and yep. totally you know change my business and do yeah. it to this and to that. So that's it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we, is there a way is is there a way that we can because um, I'm intrigued by what's going on, on the marketing side with the uh, the Quinnipiac program. Um, you know that anything that we can do, not just to feed off that, just looking at what's going on in marketing, but maybe get, um, uh, once things are launched or, or moved forward, um, maybe get a combined meeting with marketing and retention to say, okay, here's what we found in our, on our marketing side. What can retention do with this and what incentives can we put forward based on what they've learned on, on the marketing side? Um, you know, I, I think it's a great program and I think you know, if we can, I guess, to use bad terminology, take advantage of what they've learned um, and see if we can craft our incentive programs better. That's a fantastic thing. Yeah, it, my, my thought on this, because I thought about this through the through the program with Quinnipiac is, you know, the the retention opportunities, you know, they're, they're a direct benefactor of all things marketing because as you market the town and you become a better communicator and you're more out there with, you know, instant information about what's going on. You have the ability to, to promote some of these, uh, some of the incentive programs and put a blog piece out that explains the program and invites people to come and question the program. So um, what, what the marketing opportunity does is it allows a, it creates a platform for retention to put its opportunities and programs front and center. So you create a bit of a buzz and you got people talking about it. So right. um, that, that to me is the single biggest. And then, you know, obviously as, as new uh, incentive programs uh, develop, you know, they, they would be also marketed through that platform. Yeah. So I think I, I agree. Um, I think we can, we can share that information. And, and again, let's not push the schedule for the marketing team because they got a, a set program put together, but when we can have any type of joint meeting or a, uh, you know, some way of feeding off that, uh, it would be good to, to I drive think so. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. I'll put it on the agenda for next time. Okay. Speaking of next time. Right. Yeah. All you right. want to touch the, the meeting date? You have to jump, Anthony? I do. I've got to jump. I uh, Sorry for the early departure, but uh, I'm, I'm off and I will uh, speak with you all in the next uh, next time around. Got it. Thanks, Anthony, Anthony. Thanks very much. Good luck, Anthony. Yeah, good luck today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Take care.
welcome to 50 years old. I don't know. I didn't, they didn't have it when I was so, 50. Um, calendar? Yeah, I was looking at the 25th. Oh, okay. February? Yep. Ah, I was ahead of you. That's just I actually have my calendar open. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't open mine. <laughs> um, that's, that's fine by me. Okay. You're open for the 25th? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do the same time, 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep. So, 2.25 this is a long meeting, at 9. <laughs> no, no, not until we adjourn the meeting. Oh, okay. So, um, we'll text. 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock on the 25th? Yeah. That's good. Okay. Uh, one more second, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so nine o'clock to twenty-five retention incentives committee. That allows us to uh, have a meeting before the next EDC, the, next, yeah. the March EDC meeting.